Dyer's structures are fortified. Hi guys, Hari here. Uh, Going to be solo casting this time. Uh, this is Dota Live presentation, though. I think Capitalist or Chappie will be joining me soon enough. Regardless, uh, this is the North American Pro Dota qualifier for the 20K tournament. Uh, really excited to get the opportunity to cast something like this. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to make it into the game in time for the pick, so they did remake a pick or AP for us. I said a pick, God, combining AP and all pick. Um, so we're going to have to jump right into the game uh, right away. I don't actually know who these two teams are. It would have maybe been good if my uh, streamer was to update me on that information before I got into this game. But I assume one of these teams, the Dyer, is NSN, and the Radiant is uh, End versus Team Justice. Okay, thank you, Holy. Uh, so, yeah. And actually, we're going to have some action very early on here. We are going to have a, a early smoke uh, to go into the Radiant's jungle here. Uh, maybe seeing a little bit of action from that. Uh, I don't know how much potential for a gank there will be, but we'll see. It depends how the Radiant is positioned here. Looks like there might be a chance for them to actually catch this DS coming out of the smoke here. If the, Oh yeah, the Vengeful Spirit is definitely dead. Hopefully the Radiant will just turn around and yeah, acknowledge that this is definitely a first blood and there's nothing they can do about it rather than sacrifice more kills. So the level 1 smoke pays off. Uh, always nice to see that happen. Uh, it's usually a very risky move. I mean, not just the 100 gold, but the, the smoke cooldown, uh, which you know you'd like to use. Usually a couple minutes in to try to get a gank in a tower. Uh, to have to expend it that early is always a little bit risky, but it paid off in this instance, and uh, now we will see uh, NSN, which I guess is end, uh, I am assuming, <laughs> going to have a small early lead. Um, other than that, let's take a look at the lanes. We've got Windrunner solo top for the Radiant, uh, Queen of Pain, I assume, going to be solo mid, and then we'll have, I guess, a Sven VS lane bottom uh, with the, the Chen in the Radiant Jungle. This is actually going to be, oh, and actually an Invis for Leshrac, and they're going to catch this Vengeful Spirit out again. Actually, uh, the slope does come out. Oh, wow, huge triple stun from the v, uh, from the Sven to save the VS's life, so just barely making it out of there. I assume that would be another kill, but uh, thanks to the nice play from the Sven, the, the VS will live a little bit longer here. Um, meanwhile, though, it looks like the Puck is going to rotate top, so you're going to have a solo against solo lane in the top lane. Uh, I would say Windrunner normally has the advantage, although she'll be playing in, in the opposing team's uh, easy lane, so I mean, it won't necessarily be favored either way, but she is going to get a little bit ahead by the fact that uh, she is getting experience in gold up here while Puck has to actually rotate up there. Uh, meanwhile, you have a Night Stalker solo mid, which is pretty unusual. We don't really see Night Stalker solo mid very much these days, typically because uh, if the opposing team knows that you're going to have an NS solo mid, they can just uh, send a dual lane there, usually a farming carry plus a support. It's going to make it extremely difficult for the NS to get any early farm. And if he doesn't get early farm, he's going to have a lot of trouble uh, being effective in the first night. Even against the Queen of Pain, it should be a little bit tough, but thanks to the first blood, uh, he gets a very early bottle, which we can now see already coming out to him in one and a half minutes. So hopefully he can use that to rune control and uh, have a generally easier time than he might normally. Uh, meanwhile, we have something very unusual, which is that the Enchantress is actually sitting in the lane bottom. Uh, she has taken a Satter Soul Stealer, and I guess is using that to mana burn, which is kind of an annoying thing, especially as a Sven who has such a shitty mana pool to begin with, although he does have two clarities. Um, so yeah, the Enchantress is actually going to leave the jungle now. So they sent this Enchantress down here to fight the, the Chen jungle, uh, making it a lot more difficult for Chen to have an easy time in the jungle. And I think that's great. Uh, I think these... The lane setup here really favors the Dyer in the bottom lane, at least. Um, the Venno Leshrac should, I think, be stronger than the, the VS Ven. I mean, you can see based on the way they're playing, both teams are playing in the lanes right now, that that's most likely the case. I mean, there's also the first blood factor, though, I guess. Um, but basically, I mean, there is a double stun for the Di or Radiant, but compared to going up against dual range, it's going to be a lot more difficult. And actually, Enchanter is bringing another Seder Hell... Uh, what is that? Soul Stealer, yeah. Hell Caller, I guess, is the biggest one, I'm guessing. And the small ones are Tricksters. Uh to just harass the Sven down even more. I mean, I'm not even sure this is so necessary. With how much of an advantage the, the Leshrac and the Venno have in the lane already, I don't really know if it's necessary for the Enchantress to be coming all the way over here and doing this. I mean, it's going to guarantee that they're not going to have too much trouble in the lane, but uh, I think they would be fine anyway. I don't really think they should fear the dual stun too much. They've got a pretty good reaction to that. Although, uh, if the 10 does come, they could be in a little bit more trouble. Um, I actually... I would like to talk about their ward placement a little bit. Unfortunately, the, it's the tough thing to talk about as a spectator because you, you can't actually ping where you want it. Um, so the, anyway, they place this one ward on the cliff here, which does block the, the big camp, so Chen can't take that, and then they place the other to counter the pull spot. I wish they would have placed just the, the counter the pull spot one over on the left. I can't show you guys exactly where it is, but basically there's a spot there which will block both that camp and the big camp, and it, and it would have given them vision uh, whether Chen... Uh, 
came or not. I mean, it would give better vision through the jungle, because right now you can see they actually don't have any vision if Chen does come. I mean, they can see whether Chen comes up that hill or not with the ward that they have placed. So, I mean, that that's a good placement there, but the, with the other one, they would have complete vision if he does come through the jungle. I guess it's all right, um, since it looks like they actually want to try to set up ganks on Chen in the jungle, which is what the, the Enchantress and Leshrac are going over here to do. They know exactly where he is right now. Um, but there was a ward that spotted the two of them coming from the Radiant as well, so Chen should be fine. I assume he's going to get out of here in time, and yeah, he does. And interestingly enough, Enchantress throwing out a Wisps, I assume that was a misclick. Uh, maybe she just kind of felt a little bit lonely running around the woods, and she wanted some friendly companions. Uh, meanwhile, though, this is going to put the Venno in a little bit of trouble. Wow, no, Sven couldn't quite make it there. Interestingly enough, though, he decided not to go for the Warcry. I think if he'd Warcried, uh, he and the Venge probably would have caught the Venno, but I guess the problem maybe was that they didn't know how long it would be until uh, the Leshrac and Enchantress were back and weren't necessarily sure that they had enough burst damage to, to take out the Venom before the two heroes came in support, which could have been quite risky. Uh, meanwhile, a little bit of a rune battle in the mid. Actually, Queen of Pain is going to steal... Oh, and I missed first blood. Well, not first blood. Uh, I missed a kill, actually, top. I wanted to look there, but yeah. I thought Queen of Pain actually might have been going for the a kill on the Night Stalker. It does blink to the rune just a little bit before him. And uh, that is something that's going to be difficult. Uh, you know, well, <laughs> it goes without saying, but... Night Stalker getting the early bottle is nice for him, but if he can't really control the runes, it's not going to do too much. And obviously against the Queen of Pain, you can't really just con flat out control the runes with basically any hero. Uh, oh, a little bit risky there, bringing the courier, but yeah, he diverts it into the woods. And uh, meanwhile, it looks like there is going to be action bottom. Sven going to th throw a stun, does only catch the Enchantress, and then the follow-up stun from the VS. This is actually not very well coordinated. Uh, Eventual Spirit's going to go down, but the Enchantress did go down first, thanks to the Chen coming in from behind, actually. So it does end up being pretty well coordinated, um, thanks to a timely entrance by the Chen. And Leshrac is going to have to run out now. Sven does not have enough mana for another stun and wasn't able to clarity because the Venom Ward was hitting him. Um, so that is going to be a, a nice little two for one on the bottom. Meanwhile, the uh, Night Stalker does pick up a kill on the Queen of Pain mid, so getting really close to death there, but it paid off for him. And looks like that will probably be enough money for his urn. Uh, I would guess he's probably going to stay here uh, and hope to get the next rune, maybe, uh, instead of going back to base. I mean, there's all these experience in gold right here, right now, that he just doesn't want to pass up after getting that kill. And that does get him a level 7. But as I was saying, Generally speaking, as uh, most heroes against the Queen of Pain, you can't control runes by yourself, but you would expect the, the supports to come and help you control the rune, which is kind of why Queen of Pain fell out of favor in the mid solo lane, uh, something she used to be really popular in and then wasn't until a little bit more recently, is that generally with the tri game or tri lane meta game. Oh, and actually, it looks like we've got a lag spike here. Holy, is that happening for you too, or is it just me? Oh, no, it, it looks like yeah, it was everyone. Okay. Um, so it looks like we've got a pause, and I am just going to take this second to blow my nose. Oh, and we're back in it. But yeah, so as I was saying, um, usually your supports uh, from the tri lane can kind of roam and set up a protection uh, to cover the rune for your teammate. But when you have tri lane against tri lane, that's not going to be possible. Anyway, uh, tower going down bottom, uh, so that's going to give the Dyer a little bit of early tower gold uh, to help. Oh, and actually in the meantime, Night Stalker is definitely going to get caught mid. Uh, he has a haste though, so he is actually going to make it out. Uh, did a nice job silencing the Queen of Pain. And meanwhile, actually, the Sven gets caught in the wood, but getting a triple stun on all three. Just kind of poor positioning there from the Dyer. And the Dyer is in way too deep. They're going to get destroyed from behind. Uh, Ventral Spirit does have enough mana for a stun. Going to target the Leshrac. Meanwhile, Chen is actually... Oh, Queen of Pain ult hitting two. Blinks in. Going to finish off the Venno afterwards. Enchantress is going to try to run out here. And Night Stalker actually coming in to try to turn this a little bit. Uh, I would imagine there's going to be another stun coming out. Oh, Sven does not have a clarity. He's going to keep running, though. Uh, he will have mana in about six seconds here. Uh, we'll see if, yeah, they're probably just going to, does manage to break the healing salve on the Enchantress. Meanwhile, though, uh, Night Stalker is going to come in from behind here. Tries to help out a little bit. The, Sven, the stun does come from Sven. And meanwhile, Leshrac is coming back in. Going to get a huge stun here. Actually only ends up hitting two, but with the Edict is enough to finish off the Sven. So uh, they trade the Enchantress for the Sven there. So that actually worked out a little bit better for the Dyer than I thought it would. Mainly thanks to the nice haste rune from Night Stalker being aware and coming in and helping out his team there. Who definitely pursued a little bit too far. Um, but, yeah, it works out. Uh, and let's take a look at the gold graph. Yeah, basically been jumping around completely here. A uh, slight advantage for the Dyer now, but uh, it should pretty much even out. That's pretty much just from the the tower gold. And meanwhile, if you look at the experience, yeah, the Radiant does have a 2,000 gold or 2,000 experience advantage. Let's take a look at his lane. Uh, Queen, or I mean, Windrunner is at 36 and 17 up against a Puck who is 11 and 1. So the Windrunner is just completely dominating this lane. Actually, yeah, it looked like she might have wanted to go for a kill there, but decided against it. So like I said, the Windrunner should have an advantage. Well, probably not this much of an advantage, but. Uh, I mean, at this level of play, it could certainly come down to player skill. So, 
Uh, yeah. Well, Windrunner does already have her phase boots finished up, and uh, Sage's Mask, I assume she's going to turn that into a Vesilius, but it uh, really could be for anything. Maybe she'll go for Yules, although that would be slightly unusual. Um, but you never really know. Uh, meanwhile, Night Stalker actually going to get an Invis rune, which he's activating, should hopefully be able to set up a gank here. Unfortunately, with this mid tower still set standing, it makes it a lot more difficult for Night Stalker to roam around and set up ganks, especially when he has an Invis like this. Uh, the Ensnare is going to come out from the Enchantress, and this is going to be a really dead Queen of Pain. Nice coordination there from the Enchantress to get the Ensnare from the, the troll, followed up by the Silence from the Night Stalker immediately. Uh, preventing the Queen of Fame from blinking out of there, and like I was talking about, they are going to take down this Tier 1 tower, which is really going to open up the map a lot more for the, the roaming Night Stalker, with still plenty of time of night left. And if you notice, his ultimate is actually on cooldown, which means he's been doing a good job uh, using his ultimate during night. Obviously, uh, during the nighttime, when you're Night Stalker, you want to spam your ult as much as possible uh, to prolong the night. Uh, meanwhile, though, we have a push coming down on this Tier 1 tower at the bottom. Looks like the Radiant Wheel take this uncontested. Sven popping his ult to help get this. And Sven, interestingly enough, going uh, Great Cleave. I mean, I guess... Oh, and actually, Windrunner is getting dove top by the Night Stalker. TP support going to come in, but the Windrunner is going to die in time. Uh, Puck looks like he... Nope, not deciding to do anything, and actually this is just going to be a dead... Uh, eventual Spirit, even without the Puck's help, so nice two kills there from the Dire. Really nice movement from them, knowing that the Radiant was basically all bottom, uh, pushing down that Tier 1 tower so that they could easily dive uh, a Windrunner top, which is usually a risky proposition, but worked out here. And Leshrek is going to come in, uh, three points in Edict, and they are going to do a good chunk of damage to this tower. If not take it, we'll see if the Radiant can mount any sort of response, or whether that will just be another free tower. Uh, but as I was saying, the Sven actually opting to go for uh, Cleave. Uh, very early on, which is pretty unusual. Typically you would see only maybe one point in Warcry. Some people like to max Warcry, um, but uh, usually no points in Cleave, just stats. Uh, but I guess they did have him in the farming lane bottom. Uh, not exactly farming because of the, the poor lane disadvantage for them, but um, so I guess that means that they want him to be kind of a carry role, which explains the cleave. Anyway, Night Soccer looks like he's yeah, just actually forcing them back a little bit. Unfortunately, Le uh, Leshrek does have Edict now, so he's going to run in and pop Edict. Uh, has enough mana still for stun, thanks to the mana boots. We've got mana boots up on him, and ooh, actually, just going to have to back up there. Nice power shots from the Windrunner, uh, slowing him down. But actually, the, the attendants are going to come out from the Enchantress. We'll see if that's actually enough to let them continue crushing this tower. I really don't think so. Yeah, another great power shot is going to be enough to uh, easily push them back here. And really unusual. Oh, actually, uh, well, I miss a tier 1 tower going down mid. I was really distracted by this skill build. Uh, if you take a look at the pucks, oh, no, there's going to be action, so uh, we'll see. Uh, the troll actually running back should have ensnared the, the Leshrac to try to save the spend, but it's not really going to matter because the Night Stalker is cutting him off. I assumed he would go for the Void there first, not the Silence, but I guess he's afraid of the, the double stun coming out there. Uh, he's going to hit the Void. We'll see if the stun does come out from the, the Sven now. Puck Orb is going to fly in and just barely miss. We'll see if the... No, the TP out does not come in time. And, uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's actually why he didn't use the Void. That uh, was because he was afraid of the TP out. But with the Leshrac with him, uh, it shouldn't have been as much of a threat. Anyway, I'd like to talk about this Puck skill build just for a little bit here. Uh, we're actually looking at 2-2-3 two, two, and 1 in the alt. Maxing phase shift first, a uh, pretty unusual choice there. I guess he was having a lot of difficulty against the Windrunner lane, so he just wanted more points in phase shift to try to dodge the power shots, although, well, power shot's very fast, so it's pretty tough to actually dodge that effectively, but other than that, I can't really think of why you would want to max phase shift first. I think I would want, you know, the utility from the silence or the damage from the orb, or the damage and utility from the silence. Uh, so, a little bit unusual in that regard. But, so meanwhile, let's compare, I mean, they didn't, neither team really had a farm and carry, so it was kind of the Sven versus the Leshrac in those roles as far as the lanes were set up. And so the Leshrac is sitting at 20 and 1, but a lot of tower gold, and meanwhile the Sven is 13 and 2. So yeah, I mean, really, this has just been a lot of action early on, not a lot of opportunity for either team to farm, basically, other than the Windrunner. And so you have action, there is going to be a push on this tier 2 tower now. Uh, Leshrac with level 4 Edict, doing just a ton of damage to this tower. Let's see if they can actually defend it. Uh... I think they're thinking about it, but meanwhile, Night Stalker is actually busy killing the Ventral Spirit in the mid. Ventral Spirit is definitely going to die. Uh, always sucks to be a support getting caught out. And meanwhile, this is actually pulling the Radiant away to run over there. I thought maybe this would have been a push from the Dire on the, to finish the tower while the Radiant was distracted, but uh, the Dire is going to allow the Radiant to get back into position, but it's not really going to matter. Ooh, big Queen of Pain scream coming out. Shackle Shot does not latch, but the Lush Rack is going to go down anyway. Meanwhile, Night Stalker running in has the silence out on the Queen of Pain, so Queen of Pain is probably going to go down. Ult comes out from Puck. Puck, though, getting killed by a power shot at the same time. Meanwhile, Sven is ulted up. He's just going to have to turn around fight because he knows he's not going to make it out of there. Chen TP will go out in time. No, just barely dying in time, and that is actually going to be a favorable fight for the Dire, including the tower. Uh, Night Stalker is still rambling after this Windrunner. Maybe not the best decision ever. VS Stun is going to come out. VS already back to life. 
Windrunner does die before the Night Stalker. Night Stalker with the Vanguard is actually just able to take all this damage. Nice stun from the Centaur from the Chen, and Night Stalker is actually going to pop to the tower. So, uh, interesting exchange overall there. A little bit too gutsy from the, the Night Stalker. I mean, he does have his Vanguard, so I understand that he can kind of get away with that, but uh, just uh, didn't anticipate, I guess, the Vengeful Spirit already being back alive. And then a really nice play from the Chen getting a stomp with the uh, Centaur to ensure that a Night Stalker kill, although he might have died anyway, having, having to go back out past the tower. Um, but now that the action settles a little bit, well, let's see if it ever does. I mean, this game has really been action-packed. Actually, Man Bear Pig playing up maybe just a little bit too far in the mid here. There's a risk of something bad happening to him, although I'm not sure exactly what. Now he's just going to blink away uh, because the yeah, support's coming from... Oh, no, but actually, Puck is in here with a haste. It has the silence. Will pop the silence, although there's only two levels in silence, so the silence isn't going to last very long. Will the stun hit? No, blinks out just barely in time. Chen TPing the Queen of Pain back anyway. Uh, although the... Yeah, only two levels in silence there. Uh, one more level in silence and actually would have been enough to get the... Uh, maybe the kill on the Queen of Pain. It's tough to say if the TP out would have worked in time, but... Uh, anyway... Also interesting... Uh, well, I mean, Ring of Protection, Gauntlet of Strength, and Arcane. Really raw uh, items. Actually... I have to take a look here. Is there a magic stick on anyone on the Dire team? Uh, yeah, the Enchantress actually does have a wand. Uh, so that's the only person on the Dire with a, a magic stick or magic wand, which is a little bit unusual. Meanwhile, on the Radiant, we have uh, one on the Queen of Pain. So two magic wands per uh, ten heroes. A little bit unusual in that regard. Um, but uh, I guess in some instances it's okay. In other instances, maybe not so much. But there is going to be a defense on this... Uh, Tier 2 tower here, we'll see. Uh, the Queen of Pain is going to be forced to TP in. Generally speaking, you don't want to have to TP until the fight actually starts. I guess she expected the fight was going to start there, but it uh, really didn't. So unfortunately, this means that she's not having the opportunity to farm the other lanes while the rest of her team comes to defense here. Although it is a little bit risky playing against the Night Stalker, because he can so easily come out of the woods and silence you, and then get a gank on you if you don't know where they are. Which they don't, because the Dire did a good job actually counter-warding the Radiant's wards. Radiant with only one ward up here at this ancient camp. And the Dyer is just going to rotate mid and start to pressure this tower. So the Dyer is playing extremely high pressure here, using the Enchantress to the fullest of her ability, getting all these creeps early on, and using them to pressure towers down along with the Leshrac. Chen going to steal this. Oh, but meanwhile, actually, the Queen of Pain is kind of caught out here. Silence is going to come out from the Night Stalker. Night Stalker, though, is... Oh, uh, yeah, now he pops Knight, but actually the uh, pops it after the Silence has been used. Queen of Pain ult going to come out. Queen of Pain actually is going to drop the Shackle Shot, latching Venom to a tree. Meanwhile, Chen coming in with an army of creeps here, and Sven at the side. Sven is going to hit this. Yeah, Leshrac goes down once. Puck pops in, gets an ult on four here, which is going to allow Night Stalker just to bash people. Unfortunately, Night Stalker has no mana for any more nukes, and actually they're on cooldown anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Everyone extremely low. Puck going to get the last hit on the Chen. Four down for the Dire here. Three for the Radiant. Is Puck going to make it out of here alive? Uh... Shifts to the orb, and let's see, yeah, there's not going to be anything following except a neutral creep, so he should be fine, although unfortunately he does not have a TP, so uh, he's kind of in a bad spot here. He actually could have just kept running right, but I guess he assumed that he would be pursued a little bit earlier than he was, and so he just kind of juked to the left. We'll see if he ends up making it out here. He's going to orb in here. The creeps are actually going to spot him, but there is no one nearby that can do anything. Uh, he's going to take a little bit of damage from the lane creeps, but he should be just fine, although he's actually running up now towards... Uh, where this VS is. VS does actually not have enough mana for a stun, but does have a Howl of Terror. Howl actually would just barely not be enough, even though it is HP removal. So basically, oh, and Man Bear Pig just barely missing on the Blink Scream. And the Puck is actually going to make it out of there. Whew. Well, uh, yeah, his his build has further intensified to be a little bit weird. Well, I mean, no, I guess now he has his three points in phase shift. He actually is leveling the silence, which is pretty important. Uh, when you're, you know, using Puck against a hero like Queen of Pain, which I assume is one of the reasons they picked him up. Obviously because he's a good sideline solo, but also, um, you know, his silence is very strong against escape heroes like Queen of Pain. Or against Chen. I mean, if you can burst Chen down quickly in the beginning of a fight. Oh, nice shackle shot actually can come out from the Windrunner in the mid here. Thinking about going on Slash Rack, but the backup is here in the form of the Night Stalker. It is day now, and he does not have an ult, so he cannot change. Um, but Man Bear Pig is just going to pop quickly. Leshrac getting some really nice stuns here, um, assisted by the slows from his team, making it very easy for him to land these stuns. And, yeah, going to pick up another kill. And this should turn into a push on the Tier 2 tower, which I do not think the Radiant can actually defend here. Windrunner is going to make this really difficult, uh, spamming power shots, but I assume the heal will be coming out. No, the attendants are actually off, but we do have an urn from the Night Stalker, as expected, uh, which is going to help heal up these... Uh, power shot hits. The tornado is going to come out from Chen here, but yeah, the... Oh, actually, with a glyph, maybe they can defend this. Queen of Pain is going to be up in three seconds. I think she will be able to TP to the tower, so there, there could be a fight here, actually. This is going to be a little bit risky, and yeah, the Dire knows well enough to back off. 
Meanwhile, though, the Warcry comes out from Spen. They're trying to catch someone. Let's see if they can get anyone. Enchantress is actually out of position here, but they are going to catch the Night Stalker. Night Stalker, unfortunately, uh, did not pop his ultimate in time, was not able to run as fast as possible. He's going to try to turn this around. Triple stun from the Leshrac. Venoald is hitting at least three. Queen of Pain ult going to come through. Channel flies out. Puck has actually caught five in his ult, which is going to allow the Enchantress to bash people from the side here. Uh, meanwhile, the Windrunner is going to go down. Two down for the Radiant, none for the Dire here. The pursuit continues as Night Stalker has popped his ult now, so it is nighttime. Chen tries to TP up uh, Sven. Sven is going to make it out in time, but Chen is most definitely not. There's no way the Night Stalker is not going to catch him, and actually one last hit from the Venomancer is enough to pick him off. And they're going to definitely, well, actually the tower went down anyway. I uh, wasn't sure if it was denied or not. Uh, yeah, actually it was denied by Chen, so nice play by him before that fight started. Unfortunately though, this is going to lead to a fair amount of pressure on the tier 3 tower here. Leshrac is going to need mana to pop Edict when it comes off the cooldown here. We'll see if there's mana boots cooldown coming up from anyone here. No, unfortunately his mana boots will be the soonest. they will have it in one second, which he will pop, and then he will use this Edict, and there goes the tier 3 tower. And we'll see, they might actually even be able to get Rax here. Uh, I think that might be overcommitting a little bit, but they've got full health, full mana on most people. So I think they're just not going to be afraid of it. The Sven stun is only going to hit one here. Night Stalker doing a good job moving out of the group of his teammates. Night Stalker getting damage down a little bit, but unfortunately the Radiant targeting the wrong heroes. Night Stalker is really tanky with that Vanguard, almost 1800 health. Uh, Eventual Spirit does manage to pick up the Leshrac, but meanwhile Venomancer is doing a lot of right-click damage to these Radiant heroes here, and does pick up a killing spree. Uh, the Centaur from... Oh, Shackle Shot actually going to latch two here. Let's see if they have actually enough damage to take down this Night Stalker, but no, they've just got nothing left. Uh, Eventual Spirit is going to probably stun the... No, decide to stun the Venomancer instead of the Puck. I thought maybe we would have gone for the Puck, but uh, Puck would have certainly phase shifted that, I think. So, a good choice by the Venom or Eventual Spirit, nonetheless. And a one-for-one -one trade, but the melee racks are down in mid, so the Dire are doing a great job applying a ton of pressure. And this Night Stalker pick is really paying off, just because, I mean, I don't know, he's managed to tank up a lot. He has the Ogre Club now, which along with the, the Vanguard and Urn, which gives a not an insignificant amount of health, uh, has been able to sustain a ton of damage, and the Radiant just kind of done a poor job focusing, and the Radiant doesn't have a ton of necessarily, well, no, they've got a good amount of burst damage, actually, so they should be able to pop a couple heroes, but yeah, just the wrong targets going after the Night Stalker. Really, you should be fo trying to focus down the Enchantress, if possible, as much. Uh, or if you can get a stun on the Venomancer quickly, then take him out, maybe before he can pop his ultimate, and certainly Leshrac is always an extremely high-priority target, but uh, Night Stalker maybe shouldn't be, <laughs> and uh, that's kind of costing them a little bit here. Um, but we'll see if they can maybe try to turn this around. Taking a look at the gold graph, yeah, 7,500 advantage for the Dire at this point, as well as a 3,000 experience advantage. Obviously the fact that they've had to group up and push so much has kind of hampered their experience a little bit, but all these tower kills are giving them a ton of gold, not to mention the 23 to 14 lead. Um, so if I was the rating here, basically I would just try to get more vision up on the map than I have now. You've only got this one ward. And basically, you're going to need a, a Roche Ward at this point. I mean, you've got to know that the Dyer is going to try to take this. And your best chance to try to catch the Dyer uh, and maybe turn this game around would have to be at Roche. I mean, I don't really see a better way to do it. So having a Ward up there, although Dyer actually does place two counter wards before going to take it. So in all likelihood, if you had placed a Ward there to at any of the normal spots, uh, it would have been caught anyway. And it looks like the Dyer is just going to take this Roche and contest it. Unfortunately, with uh, the mid melee racks down, um, this lane just gets pushed up automatically so much that it becomes very difficult uh, for the Radiant to get into position to defend this. And just great warding from the Dyer, which, you know, is very easy. It's very easy to ward as a support when you have such a huge tower advantage, um, is making it really difficult for the Radiant to basically move anywhere, especially with the Knight coming. Uh, yeah, it's going to be real dangerous for them. Knight Stalker, I... I don't see maybe on the curve. Yeah, he has a Mithril Hammer. I was going to say, I would assume he would go BKB anyway. I mean, when they ha when the, you're pressuring the other team this much, you don't really need the Aghanims. And it uh, looks like he's actually going to catch the Sven here. Goes for the Void first this time. He's going to probably silence the Sven and Sven turns around. No, just decides to throw out the silence anyway. Uh, Chen is going to TP the Sven back. So Sven will be just fine. And uh, Eventual Spirit throwing out a stun there on the left track, but it's not really going to do too much. I'm sure the Night Stalker will probably just earn. No, actually, Night Stalker doesn't have any earns up. Earn charges left. Um, it's not really going to matter. A large enough creep wave here. Uh, well, actually, we have a TP coming in from the Sven, and there's actually going to be another really nice shackle shot. Swindrunner has got some amazing shackle shots, but just really hasn't been enough. Sun is going to come off the left track. Puck orbs in, gets an ult on three or four. Queen of Pain ult is actually going to come through, and this Chen ult is actually giving them a fair amount of health here. If Sven can just hit a couple people with his ult on, but he's actually running over towards the left track. Well, actually, uh, I guess he's listening to what I said. Instead of bashing the, the Night Stalker, he does the turn on the Leshrac. Uh, he sounds, does have another stun out. We'll see if he can actually turn this around at all. Oh my god. These Shackle Shots. Oh, this Windrunner. I feel so sorry for you. Your team is really letting you down. You dominated that top lane. You're just throwing out amazing Shackle Shots. And uh, meanwhile, the rest of your team is just dying. So there's not much you can do about it, unfortunately.
which kind of really came down to the, just the better lanes from the Dyer early on, and uh, just a nice higher pressure lineup. Um, I, that's the the thing with the difference between Enchantress and Chen is that you know Chen is a lot better pushing in the mid game. Enchantress is a lot better early on and later. Uh, another shackle. I mean that shouldn't really be surprising at this point. Uh, Queen of Pain is going to have the opportunity to blink in here when the stun flies out. We should blink in and try to kill this Enchantress. Ops instead to just run in. I mean wanted the opportunity to try to blink out, but he's got to know that's not going to work against the Night Stalker. Uh, the Enchantress does end up going down anyway, but actually after getting the mech off, which unfortunately is going to buy the Dire a little bit more time, and uh, it's probably going to lead to a few more kills. The Queen of Pain is going to make it out, but the uh, Leshrac does pop the Sven. Sven does buy back. I assume we try to work right in here. Uh, oh, Shackle Shot latching the Puck to a tree when Puck tried orbing out. So Puck is going to go down as well. But yeah, as I was talking about there, I mean, generally speaking, as a Queen of Pain, when you can, you want to run and use your abilities so that you can have the opportunity to blink out. But against a Night Stalker, you can't really think that you're going to be running in and not get silenced. So you're probably not blinking out. In a situation like that, where you're targeting a hero who has a mech, you really just need to burst her down as quickly as possible. So having blinked in and screamed there would have probably gotten the kill before the mech went off, and that would have been a little bit more favorable for them. Night Stalker actually coming with double damage on the Sven here. I'm not so sure. Oh, no, hitting so hard with that double damage. It does have BKB. So even if the Radiant does kind of try to come to support the Sven here, he would be just fine. Um, but is able to pick up the kill with no problem anyway. Just hitting so, I mean... Yeah, 250, uh, 270 damage per hit with that double damage. Pretty insane. Uh, does, like I said, have his BKB picked up, and I guess I will take a look at any other major item pickups here. Have a blink from the puck. I don't know if he had that before. I wasn't able to see that necessarily. Uh, Leshrac has gone the Bloodstone build, uh, you know, turning the... Oh, puck actually. It looks like he's... No. I uh, just heard Puck, but I, I saw one hero, but it's pink. It's just the Night Stalker playing aggressive down there. Anyway, going for the uh, Arcane Boots, uh, disassembling them and turning them into a Bloodstone. Pretty typical Leshrac build these days. And then opting to go for the Travels, uh, which will help him push up the, the side lanes while they continue to pressure bottom. Well, not push up the side lanes, push up the top, basically. Uh, and then basically TP bottom at any time when his team needs him. And then going for, I mean, you know, the Splitter Diabolic Edict build is pretty much standard these days, but actually opting not to go any Lightning Storm. Um, this is kind of a, a point of contention between some left right players. Some people believe that getting the Lightning Storm is just worth it, since uh, having that extra spell to cast will deal more damage, helps you push down creep waves, whatever. But at the same time, uh, you know, maybe he doesn't necessarily consider that he had the mana early on to support Lightning Storm as well as Nova, so he just went straight to Nova and stats instead, which is going to give him a little more tank ability. And speaking of the Leshrac, though, he is going to TP down to this bottom here, like I was talking about. We'll easily be able to get to this lane whenever his team wants to fight, and they're just going to push in here. Enchantress still has two creeps, doing a great job making sure she creeps her creeps up, which is something that Enchantress sometimes have difficulty with. Chen is going to steal one of these, but... Uh, it's already bought enough time from the tower. Uh, Night Stalker is actually going to BKB up and go in on this Queen of Pain, targeting the right target. Queen of Pain should probably be able to make it out in time here. I assume she should buy as much time as she can. Meanwhile, on the back end, Chen is actually able to pick up a kill. His heals are doing a little bit, but at this time, it's about time for the fight to turn. Venomancer is going to have to back out here. Queen of Pain actually screaming in to try to take it down the Venomancer. Gets an ult in behind, but only on the Night Stalker. And Night Stalker is easily just going to turn around Silence her and kill her. Uh, meanwhile, Sven does pick up a uh, stun on the Enchantress, which should be a kill, but actually Enchantress is doing a nice job slowing Sven, and now Night Stalker bashing on him from behind. We'll see if there's actually any... A Void does come out from the Night Stalker, which is going to be enough to kill... Oh, the Shackle Shot is barely missing. Orb coming in from Puck, and actually that will be enough to finish off the Sven. Uh, but meanwhile, <laughs> our Windrunner picks up a kill on the Venomancer and the Puck. Windrunner actually does have her four staff finish. She's going to try to keep chasing here, maybe. A power Shot can also just barely hits the Night Stalker. Night Stalker actually just turning back around. Knows he has the Aegis. Meanwhile, Lushrak is here. Uh, I don't know if he bought back or if he just moved out of the fight there. I can't really remember. Anyway, he's just going to come down, nuke these creeps down very quickly with his uh, Pulse Nova and then do some edict damage to this Rax. Dire is just going to try to focus down this melee Rax as much as possible here. Understanding this might not have been the best fight for them ever, but it doesn't really matter as long as we get Rax. Uh, trying to take the ranged Rax as well here because, well, might as well. Swap coming out from the Vengeful Spirit. Stun knocking. Oh, yeah, the stun does finally get out. Uh, after getting voided from the Night Stalker. Night Stalker, ooh, actually getting Shackle Shot. The urn should be enough. Yeah, urn finishes off the Vengeful Spirit. And Man Bear Fig actually is going to probably try to pursue this Night Stalker, but Night Stalker has BKB'd up, so there's no way he's getting slowed. And given it's night, he's just running way too fast. So he's going to get out of here. Uh, without much problem, does manage to pick up the Vengeful Spirit kill after the Leshrac died. But that's two lanes down, and that's pretty much GG. It's very difficult to come back from uh, being two lanes down, especially when the other team has 10k gold advantage. Uh, anyway, I'm going to have a drink of water. Oh, it's refreshing. I hate solo casting. I talk way too fast, so I spend too much time talking, and my throat gets really sore. Anyway, uh, I assume the Dire will just try to come and push in here. 
uh, take the top racks and end the game sometime soon here. I'm kind of surprised that the Radiant have GG'd, but I guess this is best of one, I'm uh, almost 100% certain. I mean, yeah, I am certain it's best of one. So, I mean, this is their only chance to get into the Pro Dota qualifier. Well, maybe not their only chance, there might be other qualifiers. Not to get into the Pro Dota. To get into the Pro Dota tournament league thingy uh, and compete for $20,000. So, I guess they really want their shot here and they're going to try to give it their all, even though uh, they understand the odds are certainly against them in the situation. I'm sure it's probably the wind runner who's telling them, guys, we're not conceding, I've played way too well for that. Um, so we're going to see one last defense chance from the Radiant here, and who knows, maybe they could turn this. I mean, Night Soccer doesn't have the Aegis anymore, uh, so I guess there is something of a possibility if the uh, Windrunner keeps getting these amazing shackle shots. Invis up on the Night Soccer. Night Soccer has his BKB ready, is going to come in from the side, should be popping his BKB now. Uh, opting to get stunned first, then does BKB. Unfortunately, there was no one for the Windrunner to shackle him too, so they weren't able to change the CCM. Puck is going to come in now, throws out a silence and ult on basically nothing. Uh, Sven is stuck in there, but he's just going to bash people anyway. Chen ult comes out, but it's not going to be enough. Gunapain actually hitting a really nice ult on four heroes there, uh, but it just doesn't really matter. The Dire just has way too many items at this point. Even with all the abilities hitting well from the Radiant, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to come out from Vengeful Speaker here. Shackle actually laughing two heroes once again, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Venomancer getting a kill on the Vengeful Spirit, and then the Chen is going to pop to a right click from the left track. Uh, meanwhile, Man Bear Pig running away from Night Soccer, but he's not going to run for long. Uh, Enchantress actually trying to control uh, the Queen of Pain, turn her on her teammates, but uh, Night Soccer just bashes her anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And this is going to be the top tier 3 tower, and most likely Rax. Flesh Rack should have eaten, yeah very shortly here. Oh, actually, another big lag spike here. Hopefully that doesn't end the game. That would be quite unfortunate, although I don't think anyone involved in this game would argue that, uh, who won this. Yeah, yeah. GG well played coming out from the rating here, just in case there had been a, a crash or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. So, uh, well played here by, uh, Dire, which I assume is the end. I assume that's what NSN is for. Uh, justice for great justice. Uh, and yeah, just did a really great high pressure lineup uh, from early on, having a nice lane bottom with uh, the Enchantress. Uh, the questionable mana burning, I'm not so positive it was necessary, although you never really know. I mean, when Chen comes around, uh, there's always a, a pretty big threat for uh, his team when facing, uh, her team when facing a double stun. Uh, I guess. Okay, well, I've been completely wrong. So, NSN is actually a team justice. So, oh. In a fitting turn of justice for me, I have been pronouncing the wrong team the winner. So Team Justice actually moves on uh, to the second round of this first uh, Pro Dota 2 qualifier. North American qualifier, that is. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. Uh, thanks again to Pro Dota for letting us cast this game. We will be back very shortly. Uh, again, this is Dota Live, and I am Hari, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. See you soon.